which, you know, I, I wouldn't disagree with that, you know, but they've been tearing it up in TNA, bringing eyeballs to TNA, and we don't want to get into that whole TNA thing right now, but, uh, uh, they, they could make a, a splash, but I don't think that they'd make as big of a splash as, as Goldberg. Same thing with Kurt Angle. I don't think it'd be as big of a splash as, as Goldberg is right now. Um, Hogan would, would pop a rating if he came in, uh, uh, but, uh, he's not gonna be able to work. Uh, so, uh, yeah. I, I, I would agree with you. Do you have any others in mind, uh, sign guy? Um, I don't think so. I think anyone else from that era when wrestling was at its absolute peak as far as uh, ratings and merchandising, so forth, so on, I don't think anyone else has been away long enough to really garner that type of response. I mean, we see Stone Cold Steve Austin a few times a year. We see uh, Kurt Angle is in TNA for quite some time we've seen Hulk Hogan over the years so I don't think anyone would garner the same type of pure nostalgia reaction uh, compared to Goldberg I, I think everyone's either pretty much done or passed away or we've seen them too often to get that type of response I mean this was the first time Goldberg has done anything really wrestling related that was televised since he left WWE 12 years ago. Yeah. I think he might have done something in New Japan, uh, done a tag team match, something like that, but this was, this is his, uh, he's, he's done car shows and stuff like that, but, uh, he's, this is his return to wrestling, so. And it, it helped the ratings out. The ratings were up 13% over the previous week, so. Yeah. Um, well, uh, some new, another new story that you're interested in is that uh, Matt Sydal, formerly known as uh, Evan Bourne, who has been competing for Ring of Honor and New Japan Pro Wrestling, he had missed a New Japan Pro Wrestling uh, pay per view where he was tagging with uh, Ricochet, and he they uh, subbed out Sydal for uh, David Finley, uh, Fit Finley's son, and. We didn't know anything about what was going on. Then it, this week it was uh, released that um, Matt Seidel had been stopped coming into Japan with uh, vials of liquid marijuana, oil, uh, and uh, a vaporizer. They take that very seriously in Japan. Um, more than likely he will be deported from Japan and not be able to return. What are your thoughts on uh, on Seidel and his arrest? Um, I will say, if he is deported, he is lucky. Um, <laughs> excuse me, Japan is one of the countries that has the strictest, some of the strictest laws, not only drug laws, but just laws, period, in the world. Um, I've been in Japan several times, and of course, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but in Japan, tattoos are banned in Japan. So if you have tattoos... Um, you have to wear long sleeves. You can't wear short sleeves and have your tattoos showing uh, in Japan and stuff, mainly because of, you know, the, the CD underworld and stuff, and uh, that's the, that's their calling card and stuff, and the full-body tattoos. Um, Matt Sidell is no... he's not a, The thing that makes me so angry about this is the fact that he's not a rookie. He's not some greenhorn. He's not some 18, 19-year-old kid, you know, who doesn't know any better. This guy has spent countless countless, you know, months and did I don't know how many tours in Japan. He knows the rules and for him to try to 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 get away with him to try to sneak in drugs inside this country knowing oh, the oh, wait, time, time out. Time out. This is all allegedly this is what allegedly happened. Okay, for him to allegedly this for him to allegedly Okay, thank I'm, you. I'm sorry, for him to allegedly uh Tried to bring drugs into the into the country and stuff was such a foolish 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 mistake. Um, they're saying, and I guess from what the reports I've read, it was only you know, and I hate to say only, but only two point five grams uh, of liquid marijuana or whatever, and he could spend up to five years in a Japanese prison for that. Uh, like I like I said earlier, if he is lucky and, and God is on the side, and you know the United States Embassy. 
make some phone calls, they cut some deals, then he'll be, you know, he'll get deported and he'll be banned from Japan. The bad thing about that is once you get banned from one country, it's very easy to be denied entry into another country. Um, you know, because other countries are going to say, well, hey, you're not allowed in Japan. Why do we want you in this country? You know what I'm saying? I think this is going to be a huge blemish on his record. Uh, I think this is going to be a huge hit to his career. Um, and I think that he's going to take a step back and reevaluate and think about what's more important to him. Sanga, you have any thoughts on, on Matt Seidel and his uh, arrest for allegedly bringing in marijuana to Japan? Uh, he must have allegedly thought he was going to the state of Washington or Colorado. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that was, if that was what happened, it was not a smart thing to do because, uh, once you have an international arrest like that, it will affect everything international. So he'll have trouble getting into Canada, Mexico, the Caribbean, all those places will see that and, It'll make it very difficult for him to work outside of the confines of the United States of America, which is a big percentage of his dates outside of Ring of Honor, I believe. Yeah, um, and, uh, you know, he's, he's a young guy. He's 33, um, so in still in excellent condition, and uh, it's, it's sad that something as trivial as marijuana can, can – have that big of an effect on his life and his livelihood. Um, if I'm not mistaken, he allegedly has two strikes against him for the WWE uh, wellness policy. So, you know, he's, he's running out of options to make a uh, career, at least on television. Um, you know, who knows with ring of honor, uh, if, if he'll be featured prominently on their television now that they can't, he can't do a talent exchange with New Japan any longer, you know. So it's it's really going to affect him, and hopefully hopefully he comes through it and, and does well. So uh, you had mentioned, uh, Huck, the uh, Goldberg return to television. Another big return that's coming up, uh, Survivor Series weekend. At NXT, they're going to be in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Um, and originally, uh, from what I've heard, that Asuka was going to be taking on um, Trish Stratus. But uh, Trish, uh, it's been reported that she uh, is expecting her second child. So uh, in, in taking that place, taking this has been confirmed that Asuka will be taking on uh, Mickey James. So, uh, Sangai, what's, what are your thoughts on Mickey James appearing for NXT in such a high profile match? Well, she doesn't do a lot of wrestling anymore. Uh, she's sort of devoted herself more to her family. So anytime she appears, I think it's going to be special. I don't see her making a full time return at this point, but. Definitely it's good for the company. Uh, she was doing very well for herself at TNA, uh, very popular over there. So I'm sure that'll translate back at NXT. A lot of the people that go from TNA to NXT get pretty warm reactions, and I would expect the same. What are your thoughts, uh, Will? Um, I'm, I'm very disappointed. I don't know what they're going to do. with. with I'm gonna be, I'll, okay, let me go like this. I would be very disappointed if this is a one-shot deal with Mickey James. Um, I don't think that her coming in for one shot is going to really do anything for neither herself nor Osaka. Um, there's, you know, the, the women's division, especially for WWE, is getting so much better by leaps and bounds and stuff. And, yes, it's good to have a talent like Mickey James come in there and basically give her stamp of approval on an international star like Osaka. Um but at the same time, I think that she needs that. I think that she has so much more left to give to the business. Uh, I would really like to see this be a longer drawn out storyline and then just having a match and then she's gone, uh, back into, you know, doing country music and stuff. Okay. I, I saw her, uh, recently in Fort Wayne. She's in excellent condition, uh, great ring shape. She took on Candice LeRae. They put on a great show. I'm, I'm happy for, for Mickey James. Uh, you know, it, maybe this can lead to opportunities to be involved in the performance center. Um, 
or you know, maybe maybe it's it's just one of those things WWE's been doing lately, where they bring in guys or now here ladies uh, for for a month or two run, and uh, you know, even if they just do that, their prices on the independent scene are going to go up, and they're going to be able to make more money for themselves and their family, um, sell a lot more autographs, you know. Nobody expects Rhino to be the uh, SmackDown Tag Team Champion forever. Uh, so when he does go back to those independent dates, his face is out there, and he can he can get longer lines at the gimmick table. And same thing for for Mickey James. Even if it's not a long term run, it, it it'll increase her profile out there for some of the younger fans, and you know it should be good. Um, speaking of women's wrestling, uh, it has been announced. It's been announced and then it's been taken back that the Sasha Banks versus Charlotte uh, Hell in a Cell match could possibly be the main event. Um, it's very confusing. It's very fluid at this moment because uh, Mick Foley, Raw General Manager Mick Foley, posted on Facebook that it was going to be the main event. And then he edited it later on and saying that, you know, the main event is whatever the fans consider the main event, so I'm not sure if it's going to go on last or not. So either way, it's a it's a huge opportunity, first ever Hell in a Cell match for two women. Uh, Huck, what are your thoughts about uh, um, that match? Let me be the first one to say that I'm I am so glad that that I am not a member of the Raw roster. Uh, more important than that, I am so glad. Uh, that I don't have to wrestle that pay per view with those ladies. Um, <laughs> we sa- we've all said it, we've all said it before. You know, go ahead. No, go. You're on a roll. Oh, we we've all said that um, Sasha Banks and Charlotte and and all the other ladies and stuff uh, that came up from NXT Bailey. All these ladies are having the best matches on the card. You see them at NXT when they were tearing down the house and stuff, and a lot of guys was worried about following their matches. Um, I would hate for that match to not be the main event and then for the main event to happen, where it's the WWE Universal title. Um, I, I'm a huge Kevin Owens fan. Um, I think he's one of the best big men in the sport. I do not envy him if he has to follow those two women. Um, I think that they're going to go out there and legitimately, without a shadow of a doubt, and do not and and take any doubt out of anybody's mind that they are the best wrestlers, or they're they're the best wrestlers in WWE. That they are capable of having the best matches of the night on any given night. Um, and I might go so far as to say that they might have the greatest Hell in a Cell match ever, man. Um, not taking anything away from Nick Foley or Undertaker or Shawn Michaels or whatever, any of those other guys and the, those legends and stuff. But I think that these two ladies are going out there with a point to prove to say that, hey, we're not women. We're not female wrestlers. We are wrestlers. And we're just as good, if not better than you. And if you're not careful, they're not going to be talking about you anymore. They're going to be talking about us. I think that those ladies are coming out there wanting to get a bigger slice of the pie. I think that they deserve a bigger slice of the pie. And I think that after that Hell in a Cell match, uh, that they're going to get a bigger slice of the pie. All right. What are your thoughts, son guy? I can see why they'd be a little bit worried putting a match in the main event spot because to my recollection, they've never main evented a pay-per-view with the women's match before. And the last time that Sasha and Charlotte were on pay-per-view, there were a couple of sequences there that made me fear for their safety. So I could see why they're a little bit hesitant putting it in the main, but if they did get the main event spot, hopefully everything would go how they want it and no injuries would result and women would get a look in the future of main eventing pay-per-views, which I think would open up a lot of interesting possibilities. Well, here, here are my thoughts. The last couple months for WWE main event in the pay-per-views have been weird. Okay. Um, for SummerSlam, the main event was Randy Orton and Brock Lesnar. They got the hard way blood and wasn't a very long match. That was just weird. Um, this past, uh, SmackDown pay-per-view with the, um, since it was a presidential debate going on, they decided to have the triple threat, uh, title match as the opener. 
And instead of having the career versus title for the uh, for the ICW IC title, uh, they put that on in the middle, and they had Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton as the main event. I mean, those are just some weird booking choices. Why not if they're if they're open to doing these unusual main events? Um, why not have the women in the main event? Uh, Hell in the Cell matches aren't about how good the matches are. They're about the spectacle. You know that these two women going into a cage match, Hell in a Cell match, whatever you want to call it, is going to be a spectacle. So why not? It's uh, I I say go for it. Change up, change it up. See if it works. And if it doesn't work, they don't have to go back to it. But I think it will work with these two special talents. Um, finally, speaking of another special talent, um, Sangai, your your friend. And mine, uh, I had the opportunity uh, to see her um, lay her boots in the middle of the ring, and I was actually the one to grab her boots and, and take them to her afterwards. Our friend Cameron Starr, because of knee issues, seeing multiple doctors, they advised her to not wrestle any further. Um, she gave an emo- Even though she's a heel, she gave an emotional speech to the uh, NWA Circle City Wrestling uh, crowd this past weekend. What are your thoughts on Cameron Starr hanging up the boots? Uh, very sad to see, of course, Cameron Starr, a member of Team Bad Knees with Troy Miller, Miss Liz, D.B. Jonak, Casey Carlisle, Amazing Maria, myself. Uh, so I definitely, I understand why it happened. Uh, very sad that it had to happen. I've known Cameron a very long time. Believe it or not, she was a very quiet, shy young lady in an HPW locker room uh, when I first met her. A bubbly cheerleader in the ring, if you can believe it or not, at one point in time. Uh, I've refereed for her. I've managed against her. I have wrestled her. We are one and one in our matches. A uh, rubber match may or may not happen at this point, but uh, I want to wish her the very best, and I'm sure she will be at shows in some form or fashion in the future, but uh, anytime you're forced to call it a day and not choose to call it a day, it's kind of rough. Yep, yep. So she will still be involved, uh, just uh, not as an active participant. Hopefully, uh, hopefully she'll be a manager or a booker. You know, she'll, she'll continue in this business. All right, uh, guys, uh, we are winding down on the final deletion of the Undisputed Wrestling Show. I do want to remind you to uh, still click on that Anger Marks Podcast Network because in two weeks we will be premiering Wrestling Nerdcast, and, and all three of the panelists tonight will be on there. It will be myself, Sign Guy, and the Incredible Huck, Will Huckabee. Um, it, it's going to be an evolution and or D evolution of uh, the undisputed wrestling show um you know but but just this is a good time to reflect uh i i'm gonna ask both of you guys some of your favorite moments but i'll i'll start just because uh, i've been uh with the show the longest uh myself and and the prophet and of course kill a kev but you know i starting off starting off with the undisputed wrestling show you know just a few months into the show, literally two months into the show, we'd already uh, talked to uh, Vader and Ahmed Johnson and um, Lanny Poffo and Just Incredible, uh, Sonny Ono, Glacier, you know, so Tracy Smothers, just Sonny. You know, we'd already talked to all those great people, so we knew we had something going with it. Um you know, picked up a lot of great friends. I, I was already friends with uh, Troy, but as I said earlier, I became even better friends with uh, Troy Miller, uh, with Drew Skills, obviously with you, Huck, um, with you, uh, Sign Guy. So, you know, it, even people that I've, I've only met in person a few times, I consider you guys my friends. Um, same thing with you, Kilikev. I, we, we've not met in person, but I still consider you a great friend. Um, some of my favorite moments, uh, over, over the last three years with the Undisputed Wrestling Show, um, we had a double bill 
with uh, Rockin' Robin and uh, Christina Von Erie. That was a great, fun, awesome show. Um, a lot of fun. Um, uh, I'm looking back on all the times that we've talked to uh, Dan Severn, who was one of our favorite guests. Um, you know, I'm thinking back to the time that we talked to Oscar about uh, King Mabel's passing and uh, that crazy night, and you know, that was that was a, a hard episode, but it was but it was a good episode uh, to uh, to talk with uh, um, with Oscar uh, uh, about his fallen friend, his fallen brother. Um, the times that we've talked to Buff Bagwell always fun. The time that I've talked to Scotty Riggs about the American Males uh, theme song. When we had an opportunity to talk to Diamond Dallas Page a couple times, both about his yoga and wrestling, so much fun. Um, and, you know, just for, for me being a fan, watching these guys growing up, earlier this year I had an opportunity to talk to uh, both members of Demolition and even got to sneak in a couple questions with uh, uh, Demolition Smash about some of his alter egos. You know, those are just great times that we've had and we'll continue to have on the Wrestling Nerdcast. But I want to especially thank this time, uh, the Prophet Rick Craig, uh, who, you know, did so much for, for getting this show established and then keeping it going by, uh, booking excellent guests. And, you know, I want to thank you too for, um, being, being such great, uh, panelists, hosts, um, just, just thinking of different approaches, um, not just with interviewing guests, because you guys certainly thought of uh, thought of things that I would never thought of, but also, you know, helping me uh, understand how the pro wrestling business works um, with your takes on subjects, and just want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart, and it's it's been a fun fun journey, and uh, I can't wait to continue it with you on the new show. Um, Huck, uh, what are some of your thought? What, what are some of your memories from the Undisputed Wrestling Show? Um, <laughs> man, uh, I, I think um, one, one of my favorite memories is uh, my first show. You know, uh, when you guys made the announcement that I was going to be a co-host in the show, that very first show, man, and I had no idea what I was doing whatsoever, and. Uh, I was just like butting in the questions, and just, you know, <laughs> had, had no idea that that was you guys were like, look, Will, um, we love your enthusiasm, but this is the format for the show. This is how we do it. <laughs> and, um, and, and the bumps and the, the bruises and the stuff that I, that I took and the beatings, the verbal beatings I took from you and Rick and stuff, man, and going through the entire scud phase, uh, <laughs> what was very memorable, uh, all the guests, man, I, I love the, the best part of this show, man, was talking to uh, a lot of the guest stuff and, and talking to wrestlers that I grew up watching, man. Um, one of my most memorable, for me, one of the most memorable moments was the Diamond Dallas Page interview. Um, he was so candid, not only talking about DDP yoga, uh, but talking about his wrestling career and stuff. Um, the interview with Jim Cornette, Jesus, oh, 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 I... Oh, time out. I forgot to mention, and you didn't mention this either. When Diamond Dallas Page was talking about the Nancy Grace interview. Yes, I was. I was going to talk about that. I was going to mention that. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> go ahead. I, I want um, to hear it. Uh, you know, talking about you know talking to Jim Cornette, um, and since you brought it up, you know the exclusives that that we got here and stuff, man. A lot of times, um, we were just amazed that. Uh, the entire wrestling world was paying attention to our to our podcast. Uh, you know, when when Diamond Dallas Page talked about Nancy Grace, um, and I want to say he called her a cut. Excuse my language on our podcast. Uh, called her a stupid cut and stuff, and, and it made national news. And uh, when Jim Cornette was talking about uh, was a safety keeper or somebody who already said and said that she couldn't book a fart in a phone booth. Um, but just, you know, just those moments, uh, talking to a lot of guys and, uh, a lot of the legends in this business. Uh, my personal favorite was talking to the million dollar man, Ted DiBiase and stuff, uh, and him and Mark Merrill, especially, uh, and, and talking to guys who had been all over the world and did all these things. And then for them to talk about their faith, uh, and for them to see that, you know, 
that for them now it was more about giving back. Uh, like you said, Zane, you know, from the moment that I actually was a guest in the show and then became a, a host of the show, I knew it was a very big deal. Um, I knew that we had something special. I knew that, you know, you and Rick really knew what you guys were doing. And I can't thank you guys enough for basically taking me under your wing and stuff and showing me how to, how to, how to do a correct interview, how to make guests feel comfortable to where they, they feel more relaxed to open up to you and they say things, um, that they might not say to everybody else. And because of that, you know, when I do interviews and stuff, um, now I'm able to lead the interviewer on and say, and to, to make it a better interview and stuff. Cause I didn't realize until you do, uh, this job, until you become a podcast or a radio host or whatever you want to call it, you don't realize how difficult it is, uh, to talk to people, to get people to open up to you and stuff. And a lot of times, you know, people have the, the mind said, oh, they're asking the same questions over and over and over again. And so you kind of have a scripting amount of what you want to talk about. And then all of a sudden, boom, there's a zinger. Um, I really missed the, the top five list. That was fun. Listening to you and Rick, uh, and sometimes occasionally Kev, uh, bitch about, you know, who the, who the top five, whatever would be for that week and stuff, man. Top five tag teams or, Top five, you know, wrestlers with a name with, with cat names in their in their moniker or whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> just being on the show and listening to you and Rick go back and forth, man, was amazing. And every once in a while, you know, having Kev uh, come in and stuff and have his opinion or whatever was was great. Um, being on the show with, with guys like with like Hugh Al Carmichael and. And Drew Skills and Sign Guy and guys who had way more experience than me as far as wrestling goes, um, was a blessing. Um, you know, like you said, they, I consider all of you guys very great friends, man. I, I enjoy talking to you guys. Uh, I enjoy following you guys and having conversations on social media and everything, man. And, and I can't thank all of you guys enough, uh, for just letting you know a guy from a small town in Carolina, um, have a voice to where people actually want to listen. To what I have to say and, and this is my opinion and giving me the opportunity to talk to you guys and I grew up watching this stuff man I can't thank you guys enough from the bottom of my heart well thank you Will um, Sangai what, in, anything that you want to share with our listeners uh, I remember Heroes and Legends 4 you approaching me with the Undisputed Wrestling Show business card which to this day resides in my gear bag and that's how I discovered the show I uh, to this day I still listen to it whenever I go down to Oregon. We'll play a couple three episodes per trip. Um, I remember it was one of the rare times all the Turnbuckle staff was together at one time when we did the crossover episode, and <laughs> everybody was on here. And the first hour of that particular episode, Kevin Sullivan spent several minutes putting me over, which floored me afterwards when I listened to it back. Um, and with not for the Undisputed Wrestling Show, I never could have cracked talk in a ring in Portland, Oregon. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Jesus. Tell me all about that. <laughs> um, we go in for instructions. It's for the Continental Championship of the NWA. Huck, defending champion, Babylon, the challenger. When I get to Huck, I say, excuse me, I need to search you, Mr. Skills. And he just gave me this look like deer in the headlights. And I said, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Paisley. <laughs> it cracked him, which was, at that point, one of my goals in life, but not my only one, because that's getting the gouge. <laughs> but before this uh, turns into a weep fest, just remember, this is this is the a celebration that we will be having uh, a new show, the Wrestling Nerdcast, right here on the Angry Remarks Podcast Network. We're so honored to uh, have been able to have been a part of uh, Angry Remarks and and to be able to continue. Uh, Sign guy, when when we first started discussing uh, having a show not named the Undisputed Wrestling Show, do you remember a couple of the suggestions that you gave? A couple of the suggestions was coming down the aisle. No, no, was, no, no, no. At the very first, the disputed no, because I've had a lot of concussions show, in my day. The disputed wrestling show. And ah. 
Undetermined Wrestling Show. Um, the, the Wrestling Undisputed Show. Uh, we, we went through, uh, I, th- I think we settled on a, on a pretty good name and, but you know, as I said, everything's going to be fluid. We can, we can change things around to what, uh, we, we have the most fun with and what our listeners to respond to the most. So, all right. Um, Will, is there anything else that you need to add before we go tonight? Um, Zane, I would like to say thank you um, for turning me on to the Razor Ramon. Um, <laughs> I, wear, I, I, I forgot to say that earlier. I wear that shirt so many places. And I did a show in Atlanta with Chris Hero. And me and Chris Hero sat in the back in the locker room for 45 minutes talking about the Razor Ramones. And I forgot to mention it on the show that, that week, that following week. Um, but everybody was looking at us like, what the hell are you talking about? We're like, no, no, it's a really cool band. Uh, so the next time you see the Ramones, you let them know that, uh, that Chris Hero is a huge fan of theirs. Um, but I gotta thank you, Zane, for turning me on to them, man. Um, I've gotta get their CD. I've gotta get like an actual physical CD of theirs, uh, so I can get them all to sign it, so I can put it in my little, my little office and stuff I have set up and everything, man. But, um, but thank you for that. That's all I say. Thank you guys uh, for all of our fans and stuff and listeners. Continue to support indie wrestling, and we'll see you on the flip side. All right, sign guy. Anything you need to, to get off your chest before we sign off? Well, I want to just thank everybody here tonight: Zane, Huck, Killer Kev, uh, also uh, people from the past that have been on the staff here at Undisputed. Drew Skills, The Prophet Rick Craig, Cuball Carmichael, all big parts of the show at some points in time or the other, either behind the scenes or on the air. I want to thank uh, Prophet Rick Craig for inviting me to take part in the spring. Uh, unexpected, but I was glad to take part when the chance was there. And thank you to all the listeners, all of the guests that we've had over the years. And um, I think that's pretty much it. We'll see you on the Wrestling Nerdcast. Right. Um, just just to put a bow on this, uh, it's, it's been a fun three and a half, almost four years doing the Undisputed Wrestling Show. Um, big, big ups to, uh, to Will. Sign guy to uh, Q, the Drew Skills. Uh, major, major, major props to uh, Kilikev being able to help us out each and every week. He's he's the unsung hero of uh, Angry Marks Podcasting Network and especially the Undisputed Wrestling Show. Um, big thank you to uh, Stevie J for taking a shot with us and, and allowing us um, to be on and, and so much better than a blog spot, that sort of thing. It's just easier to book us. And, and, you know, I, as I said earlier, I've been uh, a fan of angry marks for a long time. Um, even before that we were, we were part of it. Um, and, uh, a, a big thank you. And, uh, to, uh, the prophet Rick Craig, Getting us started, getting our show started, uh, booking so many great guests, opening up opportunities for me personally in the pro wrestling business. Um, can't thank him enough, and uh, we'll, we'll have him as a guest on the uh, Wrestling Nerdcast 